Good morning, one and all. Quickly, the second theme today is patient smile. A smile is God's blessing to only human beings. And every hospital is trying its efforts. How do I put that in the minds of, in the hearts of patients? Every hospital owner comes and asks me. I always say this. We are all filled with emotions. And every, every patient is a human dynamite. You know, the two major, two major things which a patient comes with emotions are anxiety and fear, waiting time frustration. If only we handle these two major aspects of emotions, I think half the battle is won. There are so many interesting things I have come across. Hospitals handling the way, um, making, the feel, uh, making the patient feel at home. Uh, have been very amazing. Actually, uh, uh, one of the instances, um, there was an issue where the lift was always crowded and there was consistent complaint about the lift uh, being crowded. Uh, what they would have done, usually we will think of, do we have another lift? Do we change the uh, you know, entry, everything? But one smart boy came with a suggestion that we will place a one mirror in front of the lift and you won't believe that half the complaint got solved you know people did not feel the waiting time that at that place it was something which was very cute actually um, similarly I have seen another beautiful uh, example of how to uh, uh, bring that uh, uh, you know patient uh, uh, smile at the discharge place is where you know everybody wants to go home faster and um, they're also worried what is going to be the bill and things like that. One hospital, what they beautifully do is, they will, they will build up the scenario like, oh, oh, this expense, this expense. But at the end of the time of handing over the bill, they say, ma'am, this is the final bill, but you don't need to pay me anything. I have to pay you 1,000 rupees or 10,000 rupees or 50,000 rupees. Because they would have collected that advance. You know, this, the minute a uh, patient's relative comes to know that they have to, they don't need to pay anything extra, the, pah, the kind of uh, smile they get is something which is very amazing. <laughs> this is, um, this I have seen in, uh, and one more beautiful example of uh, waiting uh, time, uh, a star doctor, she will see patients only at 12 o'clock in the night or 1 o'clock in the night. Patients come, they will wait, but the way they come out of after seeing her will be like, my God, I've seen the Tirupati Devasthanam deity. That kind of, uh, uh, you know, satisfaction and trust they come out with. At time, at 2 o'clock in the morning, early morning, you know. Then I went ahead and did a quick research of, you know, elaborate research rather, of what make patients come out. And it's so irritating to wait for two hours, three hours, and that too in the night, just because she's a star doctor. But then I realized that this waiting time, the doctor, star doctor has intelligently made use of. Actually, every stage in this two hours or one hour of waiting time is broken down. The patient will be sent to a junior doctor, as usual. There will be a junior doctor who will see the basic history and other things, where the uh, emotion of the patient is most of the emotions is already drained or uh, negative things are kind of neutralized then the important aspect is the patient goes to the next cubicle which is where the transformation happens a counselor sits there and this counselor is a very talented person she un she's very empathetic and compassionate i always say this these are the two uh, positive things which have to uh, you know Compassion and empathy, which has to address the two strong emotions, negative emotions of fear and frustration. Okay, so this lady instills in the mind of the patient how big this doctor is, how she has sacrificed her life for the patients, how she's sitting every day at two o'clock, the recent awards, everything she tells. And the patient is already ready. And the patient enters the star doctor's room with almost surrender. And uh, you know, it's, it's kind of a magic when they come out ha with, with a full satisfaction. And that is the mindset they already set. See, because we all know 
its psychosomatic psychology plays a very important role in the healing of the patient. And the patient is already sold, and the patient is already, you know, um, sure that she's in the safe hands, and she gets, um, and the patient uh, uh, success rate is also very high. It, it, that is why she's a star doctor. So these are small, um, uh, because we are not here, we are dealing with the humans, dynamites, actually. We are not dealing with materials, it's, which is much easier. So here uh, I call upon experts to talk more about uh, um, how they, uh, they, uh, they during their consulting, how they um, advise, how they deal with emotions and bring that patient's smile. I uh, call upon Mr. Raj Gopal Yadavalli, Director, Forum Business Research, Private Limited, Hyderabad. Mr. Raj Gopal is a technology entrepreneur who understands consumer behavior, psychology, and the role of emotions in making buying decisions. He's an MBA in general uh, management from Rotterdam School of Management, Netherlands, and is an alumnus of Osmania University College of Engineering. He has lived in USA and Europe for over 10 years before returning to India in 2003. Welcome, sir. Request Dr. Deepak. Please come on to this dais. Doc, Dr. Deepak is a consultant urologist, Asian Institute of Nephrology and Urology. He has been associated with the Yashoda Hospital earlier. He has completed his MCH from Sri Ramachandra University, Chennai, and made publications in many national and international journals. Welcome you, doctor. I call upon Ms. Anita, Senior Manager, Polo Hospitals, Jubilee Hills. She's certified net promoter score professional. Welcome, ma'am. Now, I hand it over to you. Thanks, Chitra, for the introduction. Um, I think the concept of patient emotions is uh, pretty much catching on. Um, we thought we were at the forefront of bringing emotions into the uh, play at the uh, hospitals. Um, patient experience as such is something, uh, you know, that's um, in the last six months I've seen a lot of action from hospitals where they are looking at patient experience as a differentiator uh, uh, for their own hospital. Um, I think it all started with infrastructure initially, so the infrastructure started um, becoming better and better. Now most of the hospitals are on par with uh, you know, the five-star hotels. Um, the steel, granite and um, glass facades are pretty uh, clean. Um, so the expectation is already set when the patient walks in, okay, it looks really really nice, so I'm going to have a good experience. Um, but where uh, sometimes I do see the difference is that, um, you know, the, the quality of the people, the quality of training that they've had and the kind of interactions they have with the patients uh, leave a little to be desired, so some more to be desired there. So uh, we've been working with, um, uh, you know, hospitals on improving this aspect uh, where the patient interactions uh, with the hospital staff, with the hospital resources, not necessarily with a human body, but also with you know every uh, um, a curtain in the room is an interaction. So if they are actually moving the curtain back and forth, or a TV remote is an interaction, or a bed is an interaction. So every interaction, how do we make sure that it is improved, uh, is something that we've been working on. Just wanted to uh, spend a few minutes uh, before um, you know I uh, uh, start talking to uh, Dr. Deepak and Anita about their experience in this aspect. Um, can you go to the slide? Or, okay, is this something that I use? Okay, so um, why patient experience looks like this is something that's already been introduced fairly well. Uh, why now uh, is a very key aspect. The value of the patient is increasing every day. So the thing is the patients today, at least in the tier one um, you know, uh, cities, have a choice. They're actually spoiled for choice. Many a times, uh, unless it's an emergency, you know, uh, where you don't have much of a choice, you run to the nearest hospital, um, they are shopping around and they know where they want to go and what they want. Um, so they're looking for that. Uh, and the value of the patient is, uh, you know, is also increasing because of the kind of uh, facilities that are being offered, the kind of, uh, you know, the same patient is being sought after by all the hospitals. So how do we make sure that patient comes to our hospital rather than to a competitor hospital. 
increase in the financial pressure on the hospitals i think this is um, pretty common most of you will agree as hospital administrators there's been an increasing uh, pressure on the finances the costs are increasing the input costs are increasing insurance on the other hand is you know uh, tightening the screws and aishman bharat is coming in so that might change a few things again um so uh, how do we address those uh, using patient experience and shifting power dynamic between the provider and the patient uh, everybody agrees now you know there's all sorts of platforms social media platforms google reviews um where the patient is now become much more powerful than the provider earlier i would say even 10 years ago even 5 years ago um a doctors were gods uh, i don't know if there are uh, i know many doctors here but i think you know wake up to the fact that that is not any more uh, a norm today um they, there is a, a, there is dr google available which is sort of educating patients to a certain extent and leaving them open with some more questions to be answered by their caregiver so that the patients come to you uh, as a doctor with with their own questions and um, if if they don't find those questions you know answered properly then they are you know they they have the whole world that is ready to listen to them uh, and uh, you know these google reviews are already old now uh, i think the latest thing is whatsapp which is taking things viral everywhere and we've seen a few instances of that uh, fairly recently in hyderabad we had a few instances where hospitals were vandalized and then it went viral and you know uh, few um, um another doctor actually a pediatrician was manhandled uh, recently in hyderabad as well so these things uh, can be uh, i think uh, fairly avoided very very easily cost of servicing a happy patient is much lesser i think you know this is one thing uh, so a patient who is unhappy is going to create cost for you either in terms of the management overhead where you you know at the top level somebody has to go and address that or the, uh, to recover the service is already an expense that you uh, you can avoid if the patient if you can keep the patient happy in the first place and we believe that you know patient experience managing it at your hospital is the only long term um, sustainable growth initiative that a hospital can take up anything else is a short term one i think you probably need those short terms uh, to begin with uh, but that's not going to be a, a, a fairly uh, you know a sustainable initiative for any hospital um so what is the value of a patient see i i think uh, when we look at um, patient experience management many hospitals think this is an expense and this is a cost that needs to be added to the existing um uh, you know infrastructure resources processes whatever but let's uh, look at what we are uh, evaluating this against right so when you look at the value of a patient it's more than the immediate revenue that a patient brings um so if they are staying in your hospital for about 3 or 4 days and they're spending anywhere uh, from a, you know 50000 to a lakh or a lakh and half depending on whatever surgery they're getting done well that seems to be the you know the quick answer is that's the value of the patient but it is not um to me the patient is uh, you know the, the patient walking in is just the beginning of a relationship and this relationship has to continue uh, much beyond the the patient leaving the hospital so when the patient leaves the hospital if we can turn them into a fanatical promoter of our hospital you know whatever by whatever means because this is an opportunity they are here with us for the next 3 to 4 days and if we can convert them into a fanatical promoter of this hospital so we have one is a, a free word of mouth advertisement by a third party by an experienced third party who has gone through the process that they can um, you know uh, whenever their friends and family have an issue they can always say yeah you need to go to this hospital this is where you want to go and uh, believe me i think healthcare is one sector where word of mouth really holds very strong i have not seen any other sector that is as strong in this space um if my brother tells me okay this is a doctor this is the hospital that you want to you know go to for this problem i am not going to listen to my primary physician also um i would probably want to go there because you know this guy has already had the experience right and the possibility of friends and family referral so this is very important um and unhappy patient can be equally destructive so i think you know both ways it really works out um Uh, unhappy patient is going to discourage about 5 to 10 patients from walking into your hospital so that's already negative for you you know whatever small revenue that you have made in the first 
initial interaction of about a lakh or so as an inpatient, that's lost by five lost patients. But if you can equally turn them around and you know they are a fanatical promoter, they're going to bring you back at least five to 10 in the next, let's say, few years. And that's what you want. I have known some certain instances where we were working with a hospital. We had a um, what we would call a detractor uh, in net promoter score systems. I will come to that in a, in a minute. Um, while the, um, the the hospital was able to recover the service and the patient walked out happy, she was a, a knee knee surgery, uh, some kind of a knee surgery it had to be done, knee replacement, I think. And then in the next six months, they brought in about seven patients within their friends and family. You know, this lady is about 55, 60 year old. She has many friends who are probably in the same, you know, um, life cycle. They probably need the same kind of um, health care uh, requirements. And she was able to bring back about seven patients in the next six months. Um, so I was talking to the CEO and he said, you know, this patient, uh, we recovered the service and this is what happened. That's a, I mean, beautiful case in point. Uh, we uh, typically these are very difficult to track the the kind of referrals that come but this is one case you know what turned out to be about uh, should have been about three lakhs of revenue or four lakhs of revenue for one knee surgery turned out to be close to about 20 lakhs for that hospital in the next six months so this is the upside that we are looking at now given this kind of an upside you know the value of the patient is very high so what is the kind of investment or the you know the cost that you would uh, want to you know, invest into this kind of an initiative. So I would request that, you know, hospitals do not look at um, patient experience management programs as cost, but as an investment that um, that is not even a long-term ROI for you. It, it starts to pay off within about a month, two months starting onwards, right? So these are the typical, you know, uh, major revenue streams, primary doctor referrals for a hospital. This is for a multi-speciality hospital. Uh, some things might change uh, for uh, super specialty ones, but primary doctor referrals are about 40% and then the word of mouth referrals are about 40%. These are the two very large ones. And we are starting to see internet referrals, Google reviews, especially in tier one, uh, close to about 10% of, um, you know, walk-ins are happening because I, I noticed the Google reviews are really good on this. Um, and then we have the, the, the rest of the regular, um, you know, channels. But looking at this, um, you know, primary doctor and the word of mouth referrals, these are two large channels of revenue stream or patient walk-ins for a hospital. And hospitals have fairly structured programs for, you know, um, increasing the primary doctor referrals. But very little do they do for increasing the word of mouth referrals. And why is that? Um, my guess is that um, they did not have a very structured program available for them to do this. How do how do we increase the word of mouth referrals? Nobody knew that at you know uh, at least a few years ago. But now I think you know patient experience management is sort of gaining ground, and uh, you know hospitals are wising up to the fact that we need to send these patients out um, smiling. And if we can do that, you know that that's that's actually. Um, that also offers you higher margin. You know, the, the word of mouth referral is a higher margin patient than a primary doctor referral. And that's what you want to increase. Uh, and we have seen, we have case studies where we've worked with hospitals for three to four years, where we were able to increase that mix. The word of mouth uh, referrals have increased, and thus contributing to the bottom line as well. So what is the structured program that is available for this? I mean, this is fairly common sense. I mean, uh, many a times I feel like I, I don't really uh, need to be in the hospital because you know what I'm talking about is very common sense. But um, I think uh, what we have done is we've gone down to the ground level to understand some of the small nitty gritty things that can be uh, you know tailored, changed. So basically there's a three uh, you know pronged approach. One is listen to your patients and the attenders that are walking in. I would call them visitors, guests. Listen to your guests that are walking in and learn from them and then, you know, apply and grow, right? Listen to the patient and their attenders. Build a good, good communication system internally. Um, it could be anything, um, uh, right from using a WhatsApp group to implementing a fairly, you know, sophisticated system that sends out alerts to the right people. But essentially what this communication system should do is 
any kind of concerns that are noticed while you're listening. So, you know, you have people go out and listen to the patients and attenders. Any kind of concerns that are there uh, can be quickly routed to the right people in the organization. Um, Paper-based feedback systems, I would say, are uh, pretty historic. I think, you know, this in this day and age, um, there are many, many smart uh, innovations that you can uh, use to um, uh, build this automatic uh, routing system. Paper-based feedback systems are too, um, too um, time-consuming and, uh, you know, the, the uh, alerts go out the next day and sometimes the patients have moved on and, you know, that they are already discharged sometimes. So. I think there must be a better way to communicate this to the ground level people uh, where they can go and recover the service. Essentially, they go and close the feedback loop with the patient. Um, so basically, first of all, I suggest that, you know, you start out with an apology. Let's not become defensive about this. Just start out with an apology. The reality could be different. I always tell this, the reality could be different. It's the perception of the customer that really matters. Whatever is a reality does not matter because perception is reality in the mind of the customer. Yeah, and then um, close the loop uh, after the apology uh, and thank them for uh, giving this opportunity and highlighting the issue. And then uh, measure this happiness index uh, continuously. Like all this happiness index in a generic term, um, and there are a few varieties of ways to measure this. One is the net promoter score system um, that we will talk about. And the other one uh, that we have started to re recently, you know, look at is the emotions of the, the patients, uh, which we thought, you know, also gave us better indicators of, uh, you know, how the patients are and how likely would they actually come back and refer. So let me talk about what are these happiness indexes that can be used at your own hospitals. Um, well, what measured gets done, right? So usually if you don't measure it, then there's nothing, no way to know whether you're actually making a progress or not. Um, we, uh, I think typically we had all started with ratings on feedback forms, um, but that's uh, pretty old now. I think the net promoter score system, um, you can still use the feedback forms for this, but I think you know there are systems to be able to capture this uh, instantly in real time. And then the third one is the emotions of the patient. So we'll just go through the second and third very briefly. Um, Net Promoter Score System was actually designed by Bain Consulting. It's a US-based strategy consulting firm. And they were looking not just for hospitals. They were, in fact, looking for uh, an indicator to, uh, f uh, you know, uh, to showcase the sort of the loyalty factor of the customers that a business has. It could be any business, any service business, product business. And um, they started out with about 25 questions and over a period of a few years, they narrowed it down to this single question after a, a few millions of surveys done to you know, find out which one is the best indicator. And this question on a scale of zero to 10, how likely would you recommend um, this business, this service, this hospital to your friends and family in case of need, of course, um, you know. Um, the two, Key things in this are the scale, zero to 10, and then friends and family. So when I am referring something to my friend and family, my reputation is at stake. So, um, you know, the likelihood, the numbers that come out are um, a more um, thought through. But if we ask them, um, you know, how many marks would you give us between zero and 10? Um, you know, there's nothing at stake for me. Yeah, you want a 10, go ahead, take it. Or nine, you know, there's... The, the score is very different when we ask this question uh, slightly differently. And what happens is nines and tens are considered promoters. Nines and tens are promoters because um, empirically, this has been proven that anybody rating you a nine and 10, they will go out and talk nice about this service, about this hospital. Uh, six and below, um, definitely detractors. They have something in their mind that is stopping them from giving you a, a better score. Um, so they have negative stuff to say about your hospital if they leave your hospital right now. Sevens and eights are pretty okay. They're not, neither dissatisfied nor satisfied. So, you know, the, so they're called passives. So promoters, you know, uh, detractors on this side and passives. Um, net promoter score is essentially the percentage of promoters that you have minus the percentage of detractors. Okay, so um, if I only have promoters and everybody is giving me a nine and a 10, then I have 100% promoters and 0% detractors. So my score is 100. 
Um, but on the other side, if I only have detractors and I don't have any promoters, zero minus hundred, so it can go down to minus hundred. So that's the um, you know the other end of the spectrum. So minus hundred to hundred is the scale on which this is actually uh, a net promoter score moves. Typical businesses in the world um, have uh, surprisingly enough a net promoter score of around ten to fifteen. Most of the regular businesses that you see, some of the best run businesses have a net promoter scores in the range of about seventy five to eighty. Um, not surprisingly, Apple is one of those with a score of around eighty. Um, Amazon, eBay uh, are some of those uh, high scored, uh, you know, uh, institutions around. Hospitals typically have higher scores also, especially when you uh, um, take the feedback in the hospital. And we notice that post discharge feedback, uh, we find the net promoter score going down slightly because you know the patients are more bolder, and they give more objective feedback there. But again, there's a, there's a norm to it. So if you have an in, in, inpatient net promoter score is like 60s and then your you know post-discharge feedback uh, net promoter score is about 19, then there's a problem. You know, there's a problem in either in the bias or the patient is worried they will get hurt if they give an objective opinion in the, in the hospital. So there are a lot of things that we can actually glean from these numbers. And uh, we'll discuss that with uh, Anita because she's a practitioner on this. She's been doing this for uh, quite a few years now. Um, the second thing that we have started recently uh, is what is called an emotional signature. Now, this is something uh, coming out of uh, uh, psychology, behavioral economics, uh, and market research. Uh, many advertisers, marketing people would know that, you know, uh, the, the brands are... Um, People associate with brands by emotions, not necessarily with the, the, the numbers, the, the, the product, um, uh, what, do you, what do you call them, product specifications, but with the numbers. So if uh, we talk about Apple phone, nobody knows you know, the, the RAM in an Apple phone. I have no idea what kind of processor it has. Uh, many Apple phone users would not know it. Um, and Apple doesn't even advertise that. Now, what is Apple advertising? They are actually putting out some photographs and I don't know, I mean, how that works, but it is working for them. Um, unlike, you know, many of the Android phones that we see where they are saying 4 GB or 8 GB RAM and, you know, this and that. There's a more product spec oriented advertisement than, you know, the, the emotion feel touch factors. Uh, and if you try to recollect some of the best advertisements that you remember, they are always attack your emotions rather than on the, you know, the brands. Some of the best ones that I do remember are like, you know, Neighbors and We Owners Pride. Onida used to be one of those, but I don't know if it's still on the TV. I don't watch TV much these days. But, um, but I know that, you know, emotions are the trigger points. And these emotions are typically um, in the subconscious mind. You know, the mind is sort of, um, there's a 5% conscious mind and then 95% subconscious mind. The subconscious mind is making these decisions uh, and these decisions are being driven by the emotions. And if that is the case, then why not we start looking at emotions and, you know, what are the emotions that we are leaving our patients with? And that's how we started working on emotions. And um, we said, well, we can come up with an emotional signature based on the intensity of an emotion and, you know, the, uh, the, the variety of emotions that come out in the hospital. And this is a typical emotional signature that we have seen. Uh, you have emotions below that says, uh, you know, there's trust and I'm contentful, thankful. I feel valued at this. I'm optimistic. I'm getting cured here. Uh, these are all positive emotions. On the other side, you have confused, vulnerable, I'm scared, you know, disappointed, frustrated. These are the negative emotions. So obviously you want to see more higher bars on the, the left side here uh, and less on the other side. So this is something that, um, you know, when I go and talk to hospitals and I say, okay, you know, the, the starting of the engagement is what kind of emotions would you want your patients to walk out with? And, um, you know, once we define that, because that becomes your brand. So that's how you're not going to be known for, right? And, and then how do we bring out those emotions among the various interactions the patient is going to have in your hospital, either the reception or the nurse or whatever. So every interaction is an opportunity for us to reinforce those emotions. And so, you know, then you start working out the standard operating procedures and further down. Yeah. I think uh, that's all I have um, for today. Um, I will, uh, you know, also 
bring uh, Dr. Deepak and Anita into the loop and then we'll see how uh, yeah, you know, we can uh, give more insight in both of these areas. Yeah. I have a short video here. Um, this was developed by Cleveland Clinic. Um, and um, it talks about empathy and how that makes a huge difference uh, in the way the, uh, you know, the patients and the attenders uh, and the hospital staff themselves are viewed by each other. Right?
have seen this video earlier, but every time I do see this, I've seen this you know, at least uh, a few dozen times. Uh, you know, there's a lump in my throat. It's, it's very, very moving. Um, but the fact of the matter is, you know, when we come back and look at our own hospitals, these situations are happening every day. I think, you know, the, the, the only difference that we were discussing the other day is that there is no tagline next to the person. But the people are the same. Uh, the kind of people that work there, uh, the kind of people that come there for treatment, they're pretty much from the same uh, kind of a video, right? So, um, let me uh, start with you, doctor, and, uh, you know, uh, patients come to you for a cure, for sure, uh, but they, they also have a lot of expressed, maybe unexpressed needs, and uh, what have you observed uh, in the patients when they come to you? Yeah, maybe that's easier. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good morning. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Actually, thanks for having me on the dais. So, uh, to start with, uh, I guess I'll start with the uh, the doctor who spoke just before us about the infrastructure and uh, the quality of hospital uh, infrastructure has been growing on one end, which is of course uh, directly related to the costs involved. And on the other hand, we are actually striving to deliver healthcare with as cost effective way as possible. Such a contrasting debate, isn't it? But we are just trying to find uh, a right uh, note to deliver this in a right way. And and Mr. Rajagopal comes out with a video which bang on your head which hits about the emotions that are going in the hospital. And yes, we are amidst uh, these emotions every day. The beauty of that video is the emotions that are rolling even amongst the healthcare professionals themselves. They're also human beings at the end of the day. They have their emotions, they have their pros, they have their cons, they have some struggles in their family going on. And amidst all this, they're supposed to wear a smile on their face and deliver it. Because the guy sitting in front of you is even in the same situation or maybe worse. So how do you hold up? So the emotional quotient of the healthcare professional himself or herself is of paramount importance here. How well he or her can hold it is how well he can deliver it to the person who is sitting in front of him. So that's become extremely challenging unless you have gone through it yourself. Many of you would have actually gone. You had a, maybe had a bad day in the morning itself. Imagine how you would go through the rest of the day. You're supposed to pacify, treat, counsel, cheer up a lot of patients through the day. And that becomes equally challenging. And like you asked, expressed or unexpressed, uh, I would say majority of the times is the second one. The patient when he walks into your room, majority of the times is just unexpressed. Majority of the times you see somebody just sits there and he just doesn't know what to say. At times they're so shocked that they're in the hospital itself. It's like that they don't know what to speak. So you have to initiate. So majority of the times I would say, just give a smile to them, make them comfortable. Just let them settle down. Maybe ask something which any other conversation would be like. What's your name? Where are you from? How far have you traveled to be here? A couple of questions to make them comfortable. And then just, they'll open up. And that's when the whole thing starts off. Uh, be patient. Just listen to them. Whatever it is. They might just start off with the breakfast they had in the morning. Or a bad journey they had in the bus. But it's okay. Just give them a five minutes time. They'll come out with all their issues first and then last would be their complaints. So they'll express out, vent out, whatever it is. And if you have a quiet look at the attendants or a son or a wife or a husband, they'll be surprised as to what this man or a lady is talking. They wouldn't have expressed that same to the family members, yeah, exactly. but they would have done it to you. You know what? It's just that confidence they have in you. The hope that they'll turn, they'll go back home more happy. Yeah, so you should respect that. Just, just let them vent out whatever they want to say. Listen to them. And maybe answer to their questions one after the other patiently. Don't hurry them up. Maybe we should keep our tone down. Let's not scream at them at times. The doctor themselves at times, I agree on that. There's a lot of things going in their head. They're irritated, a long day, a tough day. At times they tend to vent out on a patient. But no, I wouldn't uh, uh, back on that. It's not the way. You might have seen 100 patients, but your 101st guy, it's, it's the first time for him there. So you'll have to hold up. So be patient, listen to them. Okay. And uh, I guess you need to also give some sense of uh, secrecy or dignity to them. Make respect their views. Okay. 
at times they may not be comfortable with their very own uh, relatives being there by the side Next if you yeah. can pick that up just let them ask them to wait outside let it be a one on one discussion with your patient and yourself it will make wonders you wouldn't know the patient would be more than willing to come out with things which he would wouldn't other yeah? even if it is on kit and kin let it be but you are you are the man there or the lady there okay you should seize the moment and uh, and i guess uh, being patient and giving enough time for them to express is more than enough i guess the rest of the things will follow expressed and unexpressed mm-hmm. but the most important thing is that emotional uh, chart that you put the last one which says scared yeah that i would put, put first <laughs> when they enter the room <laughs> of course you clear that yeah. the rest of the emotions will flow you need not do anything else yeah. very well put doctor actually you know what you said about um, Uh, you seeing about 100 patients but for the for the patient that's the first doctor of the day or maybe for the for the year or for their life you know that they are seeing so i think it's very important for them that is that is the world for you it's a 100 101st very patient. true I mean, it, it's a routine for you not for yeah. them yeah. yeah they have come for their even though it is a routine for you but that's you need your balance to be kept right there for the good of you and for the patient actually true. so that you judge correctly you deliver the goods correctly so in all possible ways you have to maintain your compose you feel you're not able to deliver do not see the patient get out of your chair go have a coffee and come back yeah the patient might have to wait for another half an hour he'll curse you it's okay yeah you'll have your moment after 5 minutes and you'll you'll have in a good sense to make him feel comfortable after that 15 20 minutes but unfortunately the challenge of these patients waiting i'll go one step beyond this for the the patients either choose the doctor in two ways one like she said a star doctor or a star yeah. hospital which majority of the patients would want to visit true or a cost analysis where he would feel this is okay for me to go there either way you have lot of patients waiting unfortunately for the population we have and the things that the doctors have to go through to see them at the same tempo same emotions is equally challenging there might be a slip up hence the yeah. back that's true <laughs> that's true yeah. so Yeah. yeah Anita you you um, you've been working on this net promoter score system uh, at Apollo hospitals for a long time and you've seen i i'm sure thousands of feedbacks you probably have a good idea of a lot of these unexpressed needs by the patients what do you uh, see as you know things that they don't express but they 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 really expect kind of things right before i go on to the net promoter score a few things that i would definitely definitely want to ask i tell is it costs nothing to be empathetic so True. whether you are aishman bharat you are arogya sri or whatever please remember it's a human being so and you being empathetic and your smile costs nothing at all so you True. Uh, please don't mix up price cost. cost and empathy it has got nothing to do with that second i would a little uh, tell something about this i had met a very old person an old doctor who was working with us and unfortunately he passed away so always 24 by 7 or whenever i saw him come he had a smile over 2 3 4 5 7 years one day i said it is impossible doctor you are a human being too <laughs> how is it that you know you always have this smile on your face so he told me i follow the dog policy so i said my god now what is that <laughs> he says when i come out of the house i mean i close the house door i do this so everything is there <laughs> i come into the hospital i'm walking out of the hospital i go to my car park i do the same doggy act and and it i i am so you know uh, that was the biggest lesson i learned when i have to deal with patients my house my problems are mine but that those problems are so big that you know you just have to do this and go in and with a smile and patients are willing to do and their attendants are willing to do anything for you if you are good and effective in your communication it just has to come from within as i always tell people Uh, however big and however strong your training department is it's a waste of time in a hospital it has to come from within so what you are uh, selecting the recruitment has to be right 
it is not about how uh, qualified you are or what it is it is how empathetic how emotional you are to deal and understand what the other person is going through so that's very very important so uh, and now for the nps uh, 10 years ago i took this uh, course with set matrix who are the people uh, who have developed the bain and company and all in the us and we i went through a one year course a certification and exam etc etc and uh, and after bain and set matrix have um, researched for 26 years they have come out with this one question why this one question is two uh, places where you would make yourself 200% confident before telling somebody else is a school and a hospital you will not just tell your friend or a family okay is school mein bacche ko dalo it will never happen unless you yourself are very confident and the second one is the hospital so these two places this one you would refer to a page another person a friend or a family only when you are 200% confident of telling the other person about the doctor about the hospital so when we started this journey uh, i think apollo started 30 years ago and there was nothing like feedback or nothing then there was after a few years that visitors book came and then you know people would be happy but they would see the earlier feedback and write something nasty <laughs> so you know you, you, we, then we started pasting yeah then we started uh, punching uh, those papers and you know, only the one paper would be available for them but then over time then we started with uh, feedback forms our first feedback form had 56 questions because we wanted to know everything from the patient ye bhi kaise tha wo bhi kaise tha and we realized by the time the patient came to the 11th or the 12th question he didn't answer after that so we never got feedback on the rest of the things so then slowly it came down to 17 to 11 to now it's a one question which is the nps and there is a small place wherein you write what you want to that is the general feedback we take there are also there's something called as a patient corridor the experience corridor is there so there are transactions that you would have at air for a patient from the first transaction is with your security guard please remember uh the person who's opening your car door or whatever or is greeting you the first time the parking man or the security he can make or mar the whole experience your front office will come much later that man if he has that grumpy expression on his face or he bangs the door on your front of your car it's all over from there it starts you know for the patient and then one more and then he goes through some 10 20 different transactions so nps deals with an overall nps and a transactional nps so transactional nps would be at every, every uh, individual transaction point. that he has but let me tell you a tran- 10 transactions could be very good but the overall experience could be bad so overall nps and transactional nps transactional nps is just for that thing when i see the overall experience over a period of time now in in a month's time i get some 30 40 50 100 complaints only on one department so then what i do is i now take a transactional nps of only that department mm, the yeah. billing the insurance or something like that and then for the next one month i do a very specific study of that department so it could be people it could be some process gone wrong it could be a third party it could be whatever but then that's how a transaction would help a overall experience overall nps of the thing the second thing i would also tell you when you're doing the nps whatever you do to the detractors they would only talk bad about you whatever you do to them sometimes to an extent that you want to fall on their feet it's a waste of time actually it's a waste of time but then the people whom you should you know try to change are the passives you must all they are the fence sitters they are either a detractor or a small good thing would make them your promoters and one promoter going out as you very rightly said it it fetches you 23 new patients that's a research which has been done by bain 
Wow. And one detractor which goes out will not allow 52 patients to come inside. That is about so, one so is to that, two. Yeah, one is to two. So, More than that. you know, uh, this is how the, uh, the, their findings are. And we have seen it over a la so many years. Yeah. That a person who's going out, in a, you know, who's a detractor, he's a detractor for a lifetime, but he will never send anybody to you. A sure. promoter can just, you know, you, you know whom to give your phone number to. Actually, with experience, when you go and meet a patient, when you're giving the card to a patient, you know, okay, this ma person I give, I'm going to get at least 7, 10, 15 in this whole year. Right. Yeah, and some detractor, whatever, he'll just tear it in front of you, throw it on your face and say, get out of this place. So, you know, it is, it is like that. And passives are the fence sitters who would really, really bring you if you do a little good things to them so they are the people so nps has really helped us and today uh, any hospitals should uh, the, the tagline should be is not what you want to give the customer it, it is what for in the sense what is that you're giving the customer as what he's taking back home with him the experience that he's taking back home with him is very important so that NPS has taught us and NPS has been very helpful in, you know, uh, analyzing behaviors, emotional signature looks very nice. Maybe uh, now we can combine the two and yeah, look at something different. Uh, just, um, uh, t you know, as a follow on question, you have implemented this NPS for a long time now. Uh, what kind of resources would be required for, uh, let's say, uh, any hospital here may be interested in implementing something like this? What would you recommend? I mean, how do they go about doing something like this? Very idealistically, they say that for every 50 beds, you need to have one experience, one a manager, a relationship manager for every 50 beds. But um, human resources, your your costs every you know everything is a you have to think of so many things sure. so there are hospitals who have relationship um, managers uh, uh, 16 20 25 of them but then uh, i don't know how that works but then uh, as you very rightly said uh, have paper for feedback Feedbacks. you are saying is obsolete but today I, we have a paper one and a thing which is on their laptop or on their phone. Electronic, we can just yeah. do it anywhere. The moment the patient says, I want to give a feedback, we they put it up on his Android or his iPhone. We give him a laptop, we give him everything. But today we have realized there are patients who nearly six, 50 to 60% of them say we want to write. On the paper. So still that thing is there with us. Okay. It's only the younger lot who says, okay, give me something, I will... Uh, yeah, yeah, they'll the, move the, forward the, with the, that. A little older one say, okay, let me write or let me speak. Will you please record it for me? Ah, so, okay. Yeah, so we record it or we uh, they take a written one also. Sure. And uh, once it is on a laptop and all, you don't require that kind of manpower. The resources sure. required are very minimal because automatically everything is calculated. But True. once it is written, that thing has to be entered by a data entry operator. So you have so to have it takes something. some time. It, yeah. it takes time. True. So that is... But I think um, uh, when you said, you know, um, one patient relationship manager for every 50 beds, um, that I believe, uh, you know, is not a fairly big cost because, you know, you're talking about 50 beds, 50 patients multiplied by 23 patients that can come you know eventually so if we look at the number or uh, you know that can be impacted one relationship manager um, you know hopefully is not that expensive right so i think you know even in terms of cost uh, effectiveness i think it definitely starts to make sense it makes sense to have that also on the other side you know if if somebody who is negative is going to impact 56 patients you know that's lost revenue so we are talking 56 plus 23 that's actually you know the the range is about 70 plus yeah uh, there are a lot of things like uh, at Apollo, the, something we have is we have a ward concept. I think other hospitals would also have. Uh, we have ward as a unit concept. So every ward has an in-charge doctor, an in-charge nurse and an in-charge operational executive. Each of the wards. So these three people 
make their rounds. First, they have a ward huddle. Uh, uh, I think people who are from this place would know the construction workers have this upper meeting, they say, upper meeting. They all get together in the morning for two mm. minutes. The huddle meet. The huddle huh? meeting. So yeah. It has come and from cricket. the construction workers, actually. <laughs> Yeah. So we, we've named it as a huddle meeting and from there they take rounds of the whole hospital, whole, all their entire, all patients in their wards. So that is where they get the uh, feedback, the live feedback. Yesterday mm -hmm. was bad, the, the, right. last night this did not happen, so, uh, housekeeping did not come, this did not happen and all of it. But at the once you've sorted it out, the next day, over a period of four days, the complaints are so minimal, third day they start saying, Oh, that lady smiled so well. The housekeeping lady was so nice to me. Third day is the where the entire transition happens for a patient. The That's patients good. who stay for 48 hours are a little... Yeah, difficult to recover. do it from day one, <laughs> from the beginning. <laughs> right. So, yeah. that way. so, you have a recovery time, recovery of service time in yes. case they stay yes. a little longer. But also, I think the relationship becomes a little more stronger, stronger. As, they, as they spend more time And they start get, with getting more confidence on the system, on the people. True. So, yeah. Yeah. Other thing I would uh, add on to when it comes to feedback or when you come to emotions is the language barrier we have in our uh, country, isn't it? So you, it's like you see patients and doctors from Nukun corner of a country, and right. I guess we have this unique concern. It's the only country in the world where we have so many languages. Neither the doctor <laughs> nor the patients are of the same language in a state of Telangana or Andhra Pradesh. Right. The doctor might be a Oriya. And the patient sure. is from Assam, okay, and they are sitting in a state which speaks Telugu, okay, and your dough boy might be speaking Gujarati and the sister is a Marathi, yeah. It's mm -hmm. so complex. So the language barrier is also there. You give them a paper pen, I agree on you that, madam. Let them write in their own language, yes. they'll mm -hmm. write poetry, yeah. Yes. You give them a pad and ask them to take, it becomes a leading question, isn't it? Good, bad, ugly or whatever it is. But if you give them a pen and paper and ask them to write in their own language, then you'll see the beauty of it or the anger of it, whatever yeah, it is. That so, that's one of the most important factors. I would suggest you yeah. people as feedbacks, consider language, let them write. Yeah. Yeah, I make them comfortable in the language. Then you'll get the true feedbacks. Correct. The moment you give them boxes to tick, mm. you're actually giving them leading questions, to, uh, yeah, something, let us tick. I yeah. wouldn't say that is as a true feedback. I think, um, thank, thanks to the Net Promoter Score system, those leading questions have actually gone in many of the feedback forms, we are not we are not seeing them today um, because it starts out with this very open-ended. You know, how likely would you uh, recommend? And then the next question is, why would you recommend? So this is uh, this is where the richness of the entire feedback comes into play. So there's a lot of uh, you know uh, stories and you know why I like the ward boy two o'clock in the night they helped. You know, all these stories are trickling out, and this is very nice to hear because. One of the important things that we have noticed is uh, passing on these good stories back to the field, you know, the, where, they, where they originated from. Because it helps the, uh, the, the, the ground level workers uh, uh, to see that, okay, whatever they have done yesterday actually made a difference and it's coming back and it's, it's, uh, it's visible there. Yeah. Uh, this is something that, you know, uh, I've seen many uh, doctors actually are trying to sort of grapple with. There's this Dr. Google, you know, I was talking to earlier. Uh, and I understand that, you know, sometimes an educated patient is also um, easier to deal with as well as a difficult to deal with because, you know, the, the less you have to educate. But halfway educated now, um, you definitely have to go through the entire process because somebody who is not educated at all, you, don't, you probably can skip the entire education, educating the patient kind of a process. But uh, how is this becoming a challenge for you as a doctor? Uh, Oh yeah, it's it's a big as challenge. As an opportunity actually. as well, uh, let me tell you. Yeah, it's a big challenge as far as Google is concerned. Yes, it is a. Of course, you can't uh, undermine or it, the Google has played such an important role in every aspect, and so is it playing its role in uh, health industry as well. But we all know that this half knowledge is dangerous. So that's kind of perfectly fits into issues related to health. Google can only give in so much as you what you type in or what you ask. Now, how sure are you as to what you have asked is the right thing? That's the question. Then maybe they can consult a doctor and ask what they're supposed to ask Google. Then they'll get right answers. So, what, what's the difficulty? Okay. So, for example, me being a urologist. See, they see blood in urine. What do you do in Google? Blood in urine. What does this mean? 
What is the first thing that pops out? Cancer. No, there are 101 other possibilities and Google gives it but it's somewhere down the page. Okay, so True. it's like, it's like if you would be researching on things you would know better. For example, uh, uh, architects looking for something about it. He would know exactly where to go and see what matters and what actually True. is the right thing. Yeah. It's the same thing even with the health. But what flashes in the first line is what troubles the patients. And he wouldn't scroll the page, trust me, he wouldn't go further. Right, okay. not more than 10. Yes, he's already shocked page. and bombed there. <laughs> Correct. So the next thing when he comes to the doctor's room is, I have blood in urine, please tell me if I have cancer. Ah, okay, they already are there. So they already are coming with a so-called answer that they have. Where did you sure. get this from? Google. Mm. Maybe they would actually do some more research on Google. What are the other possibility of blood in sure. urine? They wouldn't because it's already hit your emotion badly. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think so they wouldn't dare to type anything more. True. Next thing they would like to, how long would I live? <laughs> yeah? Yeah. So I that's what cancer does to you, conclusion. which is actually not true even otherwise. Cancer sure. doesn't mean it's the end of the story. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, Google has its challenging things because it actually puts, gives you information right in its own way, but it's not going to help you. Mm. So, the challenge for us is to undo what they have learnt in Google or put that knowledge in right. the right direction yeah. and then counsel them saying that, look, I don't say that's wrong, but does it imply to you is the question I am supposed to answer. So, in a way, it is challenging rather than patients who are coming from rural setup. Would right. say, they would just put the entire trust on you. It's actually burdening you with more responsibility. I would say yeah. easier in a way, but it's more responsibility on you because they are like, do what you want. Just make me all right. Yeah? That's uh, higher responsibility. Higher responsibility, than yes. It sounds patient. easier, but True. it's heavier on your You head. are making all the decision for the patient. In fact, they would say, what is the right? If you give them options. Right. Okay, this is the conservative line. This is the surgical line. What would you say? You do what you, you do. want. Yeah, you are the best judge. Just imagine yeah. what you are supposed to. You <laughs> think on so many aspects, their emotional aspects, their financial aspects, Correct. their follow-up aspects. There are so many things before you would think, Suggest. before take a suggestion or before you would do something for them. So yeah, both of them have their own challenges. Right. Dr. Google does it bad for some extent and the patients who come with a clean sheet also have a challenge to us. Yeah. But I guess it's a, it's a something that we have to live with because that's there out yes, there. Yes, you only. can't yeah? undo it. Yeah. And you can't undo the Google stuff. Right. Um, uh, one question, a quick question for you. Uh, what are the major challenges in implementing, uh, you know, this kind of a pr program um, that you have seen that have to be overcome? I mean, if a new hospital would want to start implementing a patient experience system. Uh, the first one I would tell you is uh, the culture of the organization is very important. Mm -hmm. If the, uh, uh, why I would say this is, if I know as an operations executive that if a bad feedback is going to come from my floor or my ward and I am going to be reprimanded for it. Right. I am very, it, it is normal human behavior, I tear that feedback, mm -hmm. I take another paper, take all excellent, fold it and give it off, <laughs> period. So, the, that so th that, that's, that's, that's a big challenge. Yeah, yeah that's the that's biggest challenge. So, if they know, okay, okay, you have, there is no service industry in this whole world, whether it is Cleveland, Mayo, whatever, that can be 100% perfect. Correct. Yeah, it definitely. cannot and hospital cannot. That's true. Hospital yeah. cannot be perfect because doctors are not gods. True. Yes. So nobody is a god there. So we are all human beings working and there are going to be mistakes. There are going to, we are going to learn from them. So if it is very strongly, uh, this uh, thing is told to the, uh, every employee, employee, employee in the hospital is being told that okay, take as many as negative feedback should have and let us work, all of us work on it. On improving. Yes, on improving, then it works. The moment yeah. they know, okay, so I've seen so many, it's a strict hospital, there is a lot of discipline, you will get the worst feedback there. It's all, True. all, everything is forged. Exactly. Uh, we've also seen amongst a few people, you know, it all depends on the kind of boss you have. He says, how dare this, that the dare is all over. The Done next well. time you'll never get any <laughs> bad feedback. It's always, oh, it's everything is very beautiful. So that's the biggest challenge. It's the culture of the organization. Exactly. Which, which yeah, yeah. Is the I think challenge. one of the important things we have also noticed is that we, we always ask the hospitals not to either incentivize for yes. the good feedback or also penalize for the bad feedback. 
and use it only for continuous improvement activity. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so, um, maybe we can turn to the audience if they have any questions. Yes. People. Yes. Yeah. Uh, something which we do, I think many of them do, is a mystery audit. Okay. Now, with whom they have actually people working at ground level have no clue. If we, if my CEO or my boss or whoever has tied up with him, I have no clue who he is in the hospital. So what we do is every, uh, you know, twi three times in a month. That's how we have tied up with them. There is a mystery customer who comes to the hospital. The mystery customer does everything from a registration to admission to staying to a he comes with fever. So there's nothing major, majorly any surgery needs to be done or cut on him. So, you know, he <laughs> comes and he stays there for four, five days, three, four days in our IP. Then he goes to radiology. He does everything possible and he gives that real time feedback which is really very helpful for us and the mystery auditors do help us. Second, we have, like you said, post-discharge calls are there. People are very scared to give an honest feedback in the hospital because they don't want to uh, go against the doctor because they have to come back or against the hospital for that matter. Sure. So the, there is definitely a discrepancy in a post-discharge call and the post-discharge call has to be done by a third party. So it cannot be done in the hospital, from by the hospital people. Many a times what we do is, we exchange uh, executives who are collecting feedbacks from one uh, ward to another. So you know, if there are two enemies, you get better feedback, you know, that they're working. They said, okay, ab iske ward ka I'll show. So he, she goes and keeps probing, ki kya hua, then what happened, then what happened. So that is one way of having a real time thing. So within and from outside, you can have both. We have something called our chairman rounds, which we've taken the whole hospital above the rank of a manager, whether he's from purchase, from HR, from any department, has been given 10, 10 beds. So he goes and he takes a feedback from 10 beds. He is just an outside party for us again. So he also gets to know what's happening. So when sure. I, when we ask a purchase, he don't give this kind of beds, you know, the cots are not fine. He says, no, this is what it is. But when he goes and the patient says, what kind of cots are these? He really gets a real time thing. So everybody knows what the patient wants and uh, we get the real feedback. So there are ways of doing it this way. I don't know if, uh, I mean, I'm not supposed to ask questions, but I'll throw one <laughs> sure. quickly to them. Uh, if Comparative analysis is one of the ways to see. So, for example, maybe they're when they entered the hospital into the doctor's chambers, maybe they were in the seven, eights, and nines. Yeah. As they go through, by the time the discharge note is given to them, maybe they've fallen to six and five. Sure. Yes. So, do you actually have a method of picking that up, or would it be ideal to one at the beginning? One, at the, I don't know if it's too much to ask. No, we for do them. that actually. Yeah, it's very interesting that you ask because we um, we do this customer journey flow, right? So, and then we notice the kind of you know I mean, at, various, various, at various stages. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So there is that and uh, when you um, look at it, you always want to make sure that the end is at a peak. So there is yeah. an end peak that you want. want. Yeah. Um, the, the journey can be anywhere. And in fact, what I also notice is for a hospital, it's a, it's a beautiful opportunity if a patient actually complains. Because um, a, a person who complains is vocal, first of all. Only about four people out of 100 dissatisfied patients actually complain. So somebody who complains and if he has complained and you can recover the service, this guy is also going to go out and be vocal about it. So he sort of owns the hospital, you know, at some point when he sees that whatever he says is also being done and the hospital is listening and you know, I can actually make an impact here, then he owns the hospital. There is an ownership that is implicitly created and which is what you want, you know, the relationship, the strength of the relationship is much higher. Yeah. So I think we have seen that happen 
issue raised and it was addressed addressed yeah very simple yeah exactly thank you any other questions Employee employees yeah uh, there is a different format for them because there are some questions and we need to know from the employees it also happens to be their provident funds and how the somebody else has treated how their boss is treating them are they happy are the career growth all these also come as a part of them and for a consultant there are a different set of questions added to this but then there is an internal thing which is happening oh, with the leads month uh, no the consultant feedback is twice a year and the employee feedback also is helpful yeah these are typically done in a wave format we call yes. them a wave format so there is you know a wave that is done and then you do it again maybe in 6 months i think that is pretty much the norm once in 6, six months, months once in 6 months um uh, but i think uh, the the major difference there is uh, you know there is they can also be what is called a employee net promoter score so um, the question there would be how likely would you recommend your friend to come and work in the, in this hospital or how likely would you recommend the services of this hospital to your friend um, because this guy knows the internals right so okay now he is thinking will i ask my mother to come and you know get her services done here because i know you know these are the things that are going wrong or right both and then you realize you know how connected they are and how truly committed they are to the hospital because this is an important aspect uh, if if the if the people on the at the ground level the people who are delivering the service are not committed then obviously your patient net promoter score is not going to be high so it's it's almost like a pedal you know a cycle cycle pedal so one affects the other okay if there are no other questions thank you uh, thanks a lot for joining us appreciate your time thank you very much on the quest uh, mr rajagopal yadavalli to hand over this memento to dr deepak deepak thank you doctor thank you so nice thank you thank you so much thank you yeah request uh, deepak to be on the stage for one photo session yeah